Bonjour, bonjour, et bienvenue sur ma chaîne. Aujourd'hui, on va parler un peu français. Is that right? I don't know, guys. It's been a while, no, but once and I haven't spoken French in so many years. So, uh, this is episode five of the series that I've been running, I've been doing here on the channel for the last few days, which is a series where I ask the question, can an Italian understand, with no training, a specific language? We've done Portuguese, we've done Romanian, we've done different, two different kinds of Spanish. What about French? Well, when it comes to French, I've got to say just a couple of things before we jump into it. Number one, I do have some training in French. Now, not that much, don't expect me to be like fluent, and I'm better at speaking than I'm at understanding. I haven't done much listening practice at all, if anything. But, of course, I do have some vocabulary, and one of the things that we share between French and Italian is the lexical similarities. Some people say up to 85 to 89 percent in common. So, in theory, you would think it's very easy to understand French coming from an Italian perspective, but sometimes it's not, because you also have to consider that there are some massive phonetic differences, and we place stress very differently. Now, because of the fact that I do know some French, there are some words that I know, for example, le homme, which is the great helm, which no regular Italian would know unless they study French. I know that because I studied that word. I'll be fair during this test. So, anytime I understand a word, if I understand it because I studied it, then I'll tell you. Conversely, if I understand it just because it sounds like Italian, well, I'll tell you that too. Thing number two, and this is the best part of this series, is that we're focusing on France French, specifically mostly Parisian, which means that this is still great for our tests, because then I can make a video about Quebec French or Belgium or Swiss French, and we can see how much I can understand. I can still do the comparative thing. So let's jump right into it. Let's see how much I can understand. Bonjour, bienvenue dans Easy French. Je m'appelle Judith, je suis aujourd'hui avec... Coleman. Et avec... Sorry, Khan. Ok. Alors, on est aujourd'hui dans Paris. I love how the show she says avec. Gosh, French is such a beautiful language. So yeah, uh, so far I understood everything, of course. She just introduced her name. She said she's here with this guy and this other guy. And then she said that they are in Paris. Let's continue. Alors, c'est la ville de la mode, la ville de l'amour. Mais aujourd'hui... Ok, la ville de la mode, la ville de l'amour. So, the city of fashion, the city of love. Maybe of all these, the word ville, unless you have studied French, you might not recognize as an Italian, because in Italian we say città, which is much closer to the Spanish word ciudad than it is to the French word ville. Now, of course, you could say villaggio to mean a village, but I'm saying that would be the only word that maybe as an Italian I might have not understood, unless I, I knew about it. But the rest, mod, sounds like moda, and amour, I think everyone knows that word whether you know French or not. Let's continue. Puis on va essayer de demander aux Parisiens ce qu'ils aiment le plus dans Paris ou même ce qu'ils n'aiment pas vraiment. So she said that now they're going to ask people from Paris, Parisiens, uh, what they love about or what they like about Paris and what they don't like. I think I'm understanding this because of my time spent studying French though. Because of course she's speaking fast and this last section I doubt I would have been able to understand. Let's continue. Ok, on y va? Ouais, c'est parti. parti. Sarti is like a let's go, peut-être nous sortirons dimanche. It's like let's go, but I wouldn't have understood that one at all as an Italian. I just know that one because a friend of mine told me from France, and I mean many years ago. Qu'est-ce que vous aimez à Paris? Uh, Qu'est-ce que vous aimez à Paris? Why, why did she pronounce the S, by the way? I thought it was Paris. I might be wrong, let me know. Qu'est-ce que vous aimez à Paris? Of course, she's using the liaison. The fact that she pronounces the S because the next word starts with a vowel, that could be confusing for an Italian. Qu'est-ce que vous aimez à Paris? So I understand it, probably not as simple for, for someone who hasn't studied and just comes from an Italian perspective. Uh, la vie de quartier, mm -hmm. le fait qu'il y ait de l'animation partout, des choses à faire partout, des petits... La vie de quartier, I think he said. So the life of... Quartier sounds like quartiere in Italian. So I, I would absolutely understand this, I think, even without training. Uh, meaning, you know, a quartiere is like an area in a town, like a little small block of buildings. Resto, des petits sandwiches, de plein de cultures qui se croisent d'ailleurs. Personnellement, le marais. Ouais. Que... So I didn't understand the rest, even though I studied it, as you can see. Just because I studied it and I know some French doesn't mean that I understand everything. So even less if I hadn't studied it. Let's see what she likes. She said le marais. I honestly don't know what that is. Because I know that the sea is la mer. Marais. No idea. C'est un quartier absolument magnifique. Chaque fois je me balade. Yeah, she's saying that the, um, again, the blocks, the city blocks are mag magnificent, magnifique. We say uh, magnifici, so very similar. Balade, enfin, j'ai l'impression de découvrir ça et, enfin, tu sais, c'est un peu le, aussi le quartier LGBTQ. Et, 
Enfin, tu te balades, t'as des couleurs partout, tout le monde s'aime, y'a y a que des... Ok, she lost me there. No idea what she said. Et en plus, c'est tellement cosmopolitain, enfin, c'est... Voilà, ça m'a She said it's very cosmopolitan, uh, cosmopolitan. Et, uh, yeah, yeah, any Italian would understand that, because we say cosmopolita. À Paris, bah, le caractère euh, historique, euh, les... Wow, this guy is so French. Le caractère, euh, l'historie. <laughs> I think it means the character, like the personality, maybe. I don't know, maybe I'm misunderstanding. That's what I would understand as an Italian. It sounds like carattere. And then he said l'historie. Uh, I think he said it should be histoire, though. So, historie, historique. I don't know. So, anyways, something historical about the city. Les vieilles rues, les petits commerces. Uh... Le petit commerce. So, petit, I know it means small, but it's very different from Italian piccolo. So, I probably would have missed that one just coming from an Italian perspective, but commerce must be uh, commercial, so uh, trading, like when you can buy and sell things. Maybe in the little small shops, that's how I understand it. Le fait de voir des gens, euh, de voir de l'animation. Euh... Voir l'animation. Euh... <laughs> I love the way this guy, I probably butchered it, but I love the way this guy speaks with his moustache and his glasses. This guy looks so French. So the, the fact that he's very animated, maybe that's what he's meaning, like lively, unless he means something else by animation. Et puis de voir des jeunes. Euh, la Tour Eiffel. Ouais. Euh, la place de la République. Les... Okay, so this guy likes uh, la Tour Eiffel, so uh, Eiffel Tower. We would all understand that. Uh, then he said Republic Square, Place de République. Again, in Italian, there would be Piazza Repubblica. Very similar. As an Italian, I can, I can, I can guess that one. Let's see what else he likes. Maybe no one is saying croissant. Come on, say it. Croissant de de chocolat. Croissant de chocolat, croissant au chocolat. I think it's all. Les Vélib, la Seine, Montmartre, la l'Arc de Triomphe. Montmartre. So, okay, he's just saying Arc de Triomphe. He's just saying, this guy is like, uh, does he work for like, as a tourist guide or something? Because he's just naming all the touristic sites one after the other. So I suppose, I mean, Arc de Triomphe is so famous. La Seine, it's the river. That These, these are super easy. Like, you don't need to know French, I think, to recognize these. Um, let's see what else he says. Uh, et plein d'autres choses. Qu'est-ce que t'aimes dans Paris? Qu'est-ce que t'aimes de Paris? Okay, in this, she still says Paris. I'd like to know why, because I thought it was Paris. Uh, is there a reason? Because it's like, I don't know, possessive or something. Let me know in the comments if you're French. If you know, and you know why she keeps pronouncing the S, because I, I wouldn't, but okay, I could be wrong. So anyways, the way she's asking it now, she, this was easier. Because the first time she asked it, she literally mumbled it. It was so fast. In this case, she kind of enunciated a bit more. And if you enunciate French and maybe slow down a bit, it might be easier for an Italian to pick up at least the general idea of the conversation. So far, let, I want to say, let's listen to this boy. And then let me give you a little bit of, a, of what I'm thinking, how much I'm understanding compared to Spanish. Uh, J'aime bien. Il y a beaucoup de culture artistique. Il y a beaucoup de... Um... Liberté d'expression, ouais. un truc qu'on n'a pas beaucoup. Again, when he says j'aime bien, that would be difficult for an Italian to, to recognize. I do know the expression, but I say if I didn't, I wouldn't, I probably wouldn't recognize it as I really like or I love. Also, he said something that I didn't understand, and then he said that he likes the uh, freedom of expression. I think he said that one would be very similar in Italian. Ouais. Un truc qu'on n'a pas beaucoup uh, dans les autres pays. Et, uh... And I believe he said there is more, I suppose he's still talking about freedom of expression, than other countries. Now the word pays, in Italian it's paese, that would not be recognized just coming from an Italian perspective and that's a similar situation with, there are many words in French that kind of start the same as Italian but then they take a completely different route when it comes to pronunciation and that's what makes them difficult to recognize. So from a, the beginning, the origin, the etymology, the stem of the words, there is a connection like mangiare, manger, but they're sometimes difficult to understand particularly when spoken fast together with the liaison because then we don't recognize them anymore. So I'd say a crucial aspect of an Italian being able to understand French with no training would be for the French to really slow down and enunciate everything. J'aime bien la langue française. Then it's fine. <laughs> Sinon, il y a beaucoup de mouvements, il y a beaucoup de, de gens cool. Il y a, I think he's using the expression, the form il y a, to mean there is or we have. That one would be difficult for an Italian to understand. Uh, il y a, on a, uh, these are a bit difficult. Uh, even like to say on est, on est, instead of uh, nous sommes, for example, and nous sommes would be easier for an Italian to understand. Uh, Qu'est-ce que vous aimez? Beaucoup de choses à faire. So there are a lot of things to do. Choses de faire, cose da fare in Italian. So once again, if he speaks a little slowly, I can recognize that coming from an Italian perspective. 
but still it depends on the speed. Okay, so, so far, before we jump into the next video, I want to say that, as an Italian, there are situations in which I can understand French, and I can recognize some of the words, but it's definitely giving me a harder time than Castilian, Spanish or Catalan were. Those were definitely easier for me. But then again, I can recognize more words from French than I could from Portuguese. So that's already kind of an interesting position. We can put French in between Spanish and Portuguese when it comes to how different and how difficult for an Italian they are to understand. Let's jump into the next video and let's see what we can learn. Hello tout le monde, j'espère que vous allez bien. Je vous retrouve dans ma voiture, une fois n'est pas coutume. On est lundi matin, il est 7h40 et je pouvais pas commencer. So it's 7.40, she said 7h40, uh, 7h40 in Italian, so absolutely recognizable. And then she said she's in her car. Then I didn't understand much of the rest. Well, she said the, the word set matin, which means this morning. Again, matin in, in French becomes mattina in Italian recognizable, set matin. So the reason why I recognize the word voiture for car, even though in Italian we say la macchina, is because we do have a word for it uh, that is very similar and it's vettura, voiture, vettura, recognizable, particularly in context. So I think uh, it's just that the word vettura in Italian just means vehicle. Uh, which is what they use. For us, it's more generic. So, from an Italian perspective, I would say that if you had no training in French, but someone is pointing at the car and says, ça c'est voit ma voiture, ça c'est ma voiture, you can understand, okay, that's her car. But if someone just told you, voiture, and you have no context whatsoever, you might not recognize it as an Italian. So it's context-based and also kind of body language, connect, in, in connection to body language there. Le vlog à la maison parce que tout le monde faisait dodo. Voilà. C'est le début de la semaine. She did say that she didn't start the uh, her vlog in her home. Maison. Maison, very different from Italian casa. I know it, but it's such a famous word that I think even if you have no training in French, you might be able to recognize it even from the national anthem. I did not catch much of the rest. La semaine, encore une semaine ensemble. Ouh. Je vais vous embarquer un peu partout. Là, je vais aller faire quelques... Again, I don't know what she said. I know at the end, she, at the beginning, she was talking about this, like the beginning of this week, semaine, which is settimana in Italian, another word that we can recognize. Quelques courses, puisque euh, ce matin... Alors, c'est un peu un turnover en ce moment au bureau, puisque bah, c'est les vacances, enfin, c'est l'été, donc il y a beaucoup de, de vacances. Cette semaine, il y a Ilana... Il y a beaucoup de vacances. I think your French needs a little vacances. <laughs> <laughs> for how much you're, you're using your, the, the words. Okay, so she spoke too fast, it was too much, I didn't understand, but I did understand at the end that she was talking about her holidays, because vacances sounds like vacanza, which kind of sounds like the American English vacation, uh, doesn't it? So that one I recognized, but the rest was a bit too much. Let's listen a bit more. This is, of course, a much harder level than the one about asking people what they liked. She's speaking very naturally. Let's continue. Luna, pas celle qui est partie du coup, euh, l'autre Luna, Luna qui s'occupe de Cracotte principalement, reste avec nous jusqu'en septembre puisqu'elle finit son alternance à ce moment-là, et Mathilde qui revient de vacances. C'est une bonne semaine qui s'annonce et du coup tout ça veut dire que je vais faire quelques courses puisque je vais bruncher avec euh, Mathilde. Vous savez Mathilde c'est mon amie en dehors de tout, on se connaît depuis 20 ans. Ok Mathilde, that's what I understood. Mathilde. Who is Mathilde? I don't know. Didn't understand anything there. It was too much. So I think that, like very naturally, fluently spoken French of something that is a bit more vloggy style becomes very difficult. What happens if we're going to a different kind of channel and we try and see how much we can understand about something that has to do with a hobby that I have very close to my heart, gaming? Est-ce que c'est possible de faire le saut de la foi dans la vraie vie? Okay, so I understood this one. Is it possible to do the jump of faith in real life? The only reason why I understood this is because la foi is a word that I studied. In Italian, to mean faith. In Italian, we say la fede. So I think Italian is not enough as a basis to recognize the word la foi. And the only reason why I know it is because I studied it. And then jump kind of sounded like, did he say jump? I think he did. It kind of sounded like English jump and then I think the an Italian wouldn't have understood the the end where regularly when he was just saying in real life that was a bit too fast I still recognize it for some reasons but yeah he's talking about Assassin's Creed of course tous déjà posé ces questions allez fléchis les bras aujourd'hui on va voir lesquels de ces 50 mythes de jeux vidéo sont vrais aujourd'hui today and again that's a word just because I studied it Aujourd'hui, uh, we would say oggi. So yeah, we begin both with o, aujourd'hui, oggi, I suppose, but it's, it's very long and yeah, you wouldn't recognize it. So from this one, these couple of sentences, nothing. 
Ufu. Oh, I see. She was trying to hit the. It's a really fun video, actually. You should totally, totally check it out. They're trying to recreate and see and test the stuff that happens in video games could be replicated in real life. It's pretty cool. <laughs> there is a part where she's jumping and hitting the box like Super Mario, and she's hitting it with the head. So it's kind of weird that they replicate it like that because if you look at the actual sprite from Super Mario, he punches it. When he jumps, he punches it. It doesn't use his head. So a uh, little, little unscientific there, Mr. French. Et on commence par, dans Fortnite, on peut taper des mouvements de parcours acrobatiques super stylés. Il y a un mouvement qui a retenu mon attention sur cette vidéo, c'est la glissade sur la rampe. Par contre, euh, elle... Yeah, I only understood that they are starting from Fortnite, which already kind of, uh, Fortnite. But the rest was a bit too much. Elle est vraiment inclinée, celle-là. Regardez la vue que j'ai. Elle est vraiment raide, hein. 3, 2, 1. 3, 2, 1. Yeah. Yeah, that one, yeah, of course. Numbers, okay, let, let, me, let me rant about numbers very quickly. So numbers in French, in theory, wouldn't be difficult for an Italian because uno, due, tre, quattro, cinque, sei, sette, otto, nove, dieci, un, deux, trois, quatre, cinq, ses, sept, huit, neuf, dix, yeah. So dix, dieci, huit, otto, sept, sette, I mean, cinq, cinque, you can recognize them, tre, trois, but good luck with numbers in French, particularly France French, since this is what we are focusing on today, because they become crazy when they start to go with the 80, 80, <laughs> basically the, to say 80, you need to say four times 20, and then to say 90 is four times 20 plus 10, like I need to do maths just to say the numbers, so... As an Italian, can you understand numbers in French? Yeah, until maybe 20. But if you go past and you start reaching all the crazy ones, then no. I, I st even with the training I did, I still get so confused with numbers in French that that's, it's such a weird thing. So yeah, it depends on what number you say. Sometimes I recognize it, sometimes no idea. <laughs> Putain, c'est trop stylé, la sensation Par contre, euh, j'ai mal au... <rire> Au-dessus de la tête de Mel, il y a une tyrolienne faite... I only understood la sensation, la sensation, the sensation. So, all in all, before we jump into the actual reading part, I want to try and read a little bit, but when it comes to spoken French, with zero training, I don't think an Italian will be able to understand much. You will be able to understand a few words, the ones that sound like it, and the super famous ones, of course, anyone can do that, but it's definitely much harder than, than Spanish, as I was saying, but it's easier than Portuguese. You can pick more, and then, uh, you know, jumping in with a little bit of study. I think if you do something like a six months or maybe even five months of full immersion in French, you'd be, and you're Italian, no problem. Absolutely no problem. So that's, that's my take on it. Now let's try and read, and let's see if reading is actually easier for me to understand, and I'm gonna say probably. Because the French, I mean, they write, they write so many words, that so many letters they don't pronounce, that I think it's gonna be a lot easier. As it is tradition, let's begin with the word shield. Français. Le bouclier. Wow, that sounds like buckler. I wouldn't have understood that. Uh, brocchiere in Italian, but you have to be into like weapons and armor to recognize that. Et l'arme défensive, la plus ancien, ancienne, est destinée à parer une attaque. So it's the, the defensive weapon, the most ancient and uh, designed. I think it's destiné, although it sounds like fated or destin, destined in Italian. I could get confused there. À parer, to block, une attaque, an attack. So that's the same. By the way, une, the is very difficult for Italians to get right. A lot of Italians would just read it, un. Yeah, so there's that. Il est connu au moins depuis l'époque sumérienne. It's, it's known. Au moins, no idea. Depuis, no idea. L'époque, époque, so like the era. Et sera utilisé en Occitan jusqu'au, I don't know how to say 15th, uh, the 17th century. And then, arme à feu. So, uh, firearms. But fur is not a word I would have understood as an Italian. No, I just, just because I know it. Individuel, individuel, se généraliseront, no idea. Redan, celui si obsolète. Obsolète, of course, means obsolete. So yeah, no, I am understanding some, and I do believe it's easier. Modification, tant dans les matériaux, of the materials utilisés, and modification on the materials utilized, que dans sa forme, with its, and, uh, well, actually, que, I don't know what K is, dans sa forme, its shape, que ce soit à travers les âges, que ce soit, I don't know what soit means, soit means, 
à travers les âges, through the eras, the centuries maybe, the, the ages, ages of course, ou suivant, I don't know what suivant means, les régions, the regions, géographiques, the geographical regions. So no, I, it's definitely easier to understand when it's written than when it's spoken. I do get it, I do understand much more when it's written, but there are still quite a few words that I miss. So I want to say maybe if I get to read French, I could pick maybe 50-60%. If I get to listen to spoken French, it's down to 40-30 sometimes, even 20% depending on the situation. And then it, it could happen that there are a few sentences, particularly if they speak a little slower, then you know my ability to understand as an Italian could go up, even for spoken French, I want to say to make maybe a 50-50, 45, but no more than that. That's at least my experience. But let me know what you think in the comments below, if you have any questions or if you have had different experiences coming from either Italian yourself or maybe another language. Let me know in the comments below. And as always, thank you so much for joining Metatrons Academy.